Yeah, hi, my name is Jeff Rhodes, and this is another video based on my book, Creating Business Applications with Microsoft 365. So today we're going to talk about Power Automate and actually how to use it to, to monitor an email box and save every email with the attachment over to SharePoint. And uh, normally you do this with an org box. I'll do it with my personal box since I don't have any org box on my uh, personal 365 account. So anyway, here's the book if you haven't had a chance to check it out and you can buy it on Amazon or uh, other retailers. So let's go down and look at it. Still need more ratings if you can come up there and do it. So and uh, I'm doing pretty well right now. It's number six in SharePoint guide. So again, please take a look at it. So that the video is not too long, let me move this over. I already created the uh, SharePoint list. I may need to add some columns along the way, but I basically have got just a blank list. Recipient, sender are both single lines of text and a copy, you know, for the CC line, subject, single line of text. Body I've got, I'm going to get the formatted part, so I've got that as a multi-line, you know, enhanced rich text. I've got an importance, which is single line of text, receive date and time as a date time, and then it has attachments is a yes, no, or, or Boolean one. So uh, what we want to do, let's go over to Power Automate. And I'm actually surprised how easy this is. You know, if you might have seen my video on getting the attachments out of Microsoft Forms, that was a bit of a of a hoof and we had to do in JSON and things like that. This is actually much easier. So let's do a automated cloud flow and I'll just call it video monitor email box. And uh, what I would normally do if I say shared box, I do this when new email arrives in a shared box. But I don't want to do that, as I mentioned, so I'm just going to say new email arrives. And I'll, I always like to take the most current one, so we'll take that as our trigger. I'll move this RPA message. And it's, gonna, it's handling my own inbox that goes with this account. But if I had done the shared one, I'd be able to paste in that account. And as long as I have rights on that account, then I do it. And then... Uh, one thing you want to change out of this, you know, we could limit it to like coming from certain recipients and all this. In this case, I just want to take coming from anybody. Um, oh, and I did remember something I needed in that, uh, in that list already. So anyway, but I'm going to change this to uh, include attachments because I want to get my hands on that. So, and I've got to have an action and a trigger. So I'll I'll go ahead and start, but then I'll, I'll go in and add that to the list. What I didn't add was a status column so that I can update it and say which one's being, you know, what's being done and so forth. So that's all right. Let's go here. So our action, I'll just type in SharePoint. And if I don't see it, yeah, I could search, but I want to create an item. So I'll grab that sample. To be that guy if I did it right and this should be email tracking yep there you go and this is the part I love about this is that you know you pop up and you've got all the stuff so this is how you can figure out what you need in there so we'll see if there's anything else I forget but the recipient is the to the sender is the from copied is the CC and notice it has a BCC I tested that I was thinking there's no way it's going to let me see who it was blind copy to. And that was true. It was totally blank. So I'm not quite sure why it puts that in there. I've got the subject. Got the body. Got the importance. And then I've got the received date and time. And then the has attachments, you got to say enter custom value, and then you can get this again. And I could get like, is it an HTML format if I really care, um, and so forth. Now, one thing that that 
is a little bit tricky is how do I get my hands on the attachment. So let me show you a little trick. At least it works with me. If I do any of these ones that talk about attachments, so if I get like attachment name, it'll put this whole thing in a for each loop for me. And that's actually kind of helpful. See, it puts this apply to each attachments in it. What it wants to do is put this create item in here. And I don't actually don't want to do it there. I want to create it above, but it builds that loop for me, which is kind of nice. So all I got to do is take that out again now, and then I can drag this up here. And now I've got it. And then I can add an action to like write the attachment part. So let's save that for now, since I need to go in and add that uh, thing. I don't, I don't actually need to do it till we test it, but let's just do it while we're thinking of it. So I'll come over here back into SharePoint, go to list settings. You can see all those ones I was telling you about. But let's go, let's go ahead and just add two columns. So we'll just say status as a choice. And then we'll just put some in here. So we'll say new, we'll say in progress, uh, we'll say on hold, resolved, dismissed, something like that. The nice thing we can change that, but maybe later we'll do a, a video and do a power app front end, be kind of nice, and plus you can do power BI and monitor, you know, how many new ones you get as you resolve them, you know, maybe an action taken. So I'll actually add two more columns. This would be kind of fun. So anyway, we want our default to be new and that way we don't actually have to do anything from our Power Automate. And we'll, but we'll add another one. We'll just say, let's call it resolution notes. We'll say multiple lines of text. In this case, I want to go back to plain text. Uh, and that's what I actually did for copy. I think I said that was single line, but for copies, it could have a lot. So I did make that multi-line, but made it plain text. So we don't have any formatting. And then we, another thing that would be nice to do later would be, uh, you know, let's call it resolved date. And we'll just make it a date time. And so that way we could track like how long it took us to resolve it and do some math and Power BI, you know, uh, now we, if we were getting really fancy, if we put it on hold, we maybe want to add an on hold date, something like that, but for good enough, and we'll, we'll put date only is fine. So now if I had added anything that needed me to put those in, actually, why don't I just show it real quick since I've saved, what you want to do is come out of it and it looks like it doesn't like my trigger it doesn't actually say what oh, it hasn't been triggered yeah I don't know what that means we'll get it sorted out now I get try AI powered editing that's kind of fun oh, let's see it doesn't like my connection is what that means so let me select it maybe it needs to validate yeah that looks okay and then just notice now, even though I'm not going to set those values, I've got those new columns that I had added. So if I forgot like copied or something like that, I could do it that way. All right, so let's go back to, we've already done the apply each. And because of that, because we're going to send emails, I'm going to test that with multiple attachments. So we got to loop through each attachment. And so uh, what we want to do is just update or we want to just add it to the SharePoint list. We want to add an attachment. So I'll pick SharePoint and then has add attachment right at the front. So that was kind of a nice. So I'll pick that same list and it's email tracking. And then most importantly, I just got to get the ID of the one I just created. So first it creates the item then I go in and do it. And this is the part that really pleased me on how easy it was. Because all you gotta do is just come up here and just grab the attachment name. 
and go down here and grab the attachment content. And that's it. And what's cool is it will actually add it for the ones inside the, uh, the body of the text as well. So that's pretty much it. But let's go and test it. You see, I haven't even tested it yet. That's why that list is empty. So we're getting uh, wild and crazy. We'll go ahead and do it. So let's let me pop over to Outlook. I'm going to send it from my personal account, but I need to send this to my 365 account. There we go. And I'll copy my Gmail account just for grins. Whoops, just so I have uh, something in there so I can see if it's working. And I'll just say test from video. And here is a formatted email body with lots of info and pictures. And we'll just put some formatting in here just to see if it comes through. So I'll highlight that. I'll make this bold. Maybe we'll make this thing do it this way and make it like size 24 something like that and then I'm going to swing over to snag it and paste in an inline image I'm hoping that one's going to come through as an attachment and you know thanks Jeff something like that oh and I didn't mean to send that to Oscar so. Something happened there. You may not appreciate. Whoops. I think I hit print screen instead. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. Let's try that again. All right, so let's go ahead and send that off. I'll go back and make sure I say send receive. And let's come back in uh, Power Automate and see if we can get that to kick off. I mean, we'll kick off automatically. Let's just watch it. it. Can take a little bit of time for that to kick off the first time. So, yeah, well, I'll pause here for a second just so I don't have to wait for it, and I'll let you know how long it was. All right, well, I'm back. It actually took a little while, and realized that it didn't work the first time. So. Uh, the reason it didn't work is, is I had a rule in Outlook that automatically moved, you know, emails to this, this uh, Jeffrey at Platte Canyon dot on Microsoft dot com email back to my main email box. And so it just moved it and didn't. But now I've just opened it. This is how it's looking right from this account. So there's the email. So that's all I've done so far. So let's minimize that but if you go back to to power automate now it showed up so let's click on it here first and then we'll go look in the list and see if it actually did work at all but we can get some insight so you can see the email that came in you know it's got you know some stuff of what that first one was and we can create item so notice there was that test two got the body Right now it says has attachments is no, so that's interesting. Oh, I think when I resent it, I didn't have all the attachments. Ah, well that, well we'll test that first and then let's set another one. Uh, and I didn't actually put any attachments on this one, so that's interesting. So yeah, we'll put it back in, but it's got all the stuff in there. And then when we did the apply to each, looked like it did do one and that's probably the embedded one uh, there so it doesn't have any attachments but there was another one did it have inline attachments so that's what I expect so we'll test the other part let's go over to the samples yep we can see it it's got the sender I copied my gmail got the subject here's the formatted email we'll kind of look at that bigger in a second 
importance was normal and it's got the received date and time. And uh, that didn't get a true or false there. So I expect that to be then uh, have something then the new and the resolved date. So let's open it. And this looks pretty good if I come in here. Notice that I it didn't bring that picture was what kind of what I expect, but the rest of that it brought over pretty well. And let's scroll down and see if it did an attachment. Yes. So let's go look at it. And there is the attachment inside the uh, uh, that was inside the email. So so far so good. I just forgot to put any attachments on it. So let's let me go over and just do a new email. So let's try this again. There we go. I'll copy myself again. Whoops. And we'll say test with multiple attachments. And actually, I'll say plus in line. So more info here. And I'll just make it blue or something just to test a little bit. Let's go back to snag it, see if I can find a, or maybe I close snag it. So let's open it up again. Here I'll put some sort of another picture that I'm going to attach some rafting pictures went on on the Locksaw River recently so that was kind of cool but let's uh, just paste that in there see if it shows up so but now let me add some attachments so I have a couple more so I'll do a another Locksaw River we'll do this test file and then I've got like this confirmation PDF. So let's see if all three of those will go through. I'll send that. Make sure it's, I've refreshed it. So I'll see it come across on my phone and so forth, but let's uh, refresh this, see how long it takes. I just got sock came through Gmail, so it shouldn't be too long that we get to see this go. Ah, there it went. So let's click on it while it's running. And it's running through the attachments right now. So let's just wait for it. There it finished. So we'll see it. So it had four attachments. The three I did plus the in line. So if we look at it, you'll kind of see the display name. There was that my text file. There was the PDF. And then that was the inline attachment. So, so far so good. Let's go over here. I can close that. We'll reload. There, we got that test with multiple attachments. Got the blue text. This one has attachments. That other one didn't put false for whatever reason. Or actually, maybe it's just blank. I guess in this view, it's just blank and, and check. So I think it actually does probably have a no in there if we were looking at the actual value. Let's come in here and come through. So there's the PDF file from my when I went to San Francisco. That's me going into this big rapids there, class four whitewater with my brother Jim. So that was really fun recently. And kind of put the image, which was again, that one there that I put inside the email. And then there's the text file. So that's pretty much it. As I mentioned, now you could use that SharePoint list. We could go in and edit the status uh, I'll see if I can't do a uh, Power Apps video to show you that part. But uh, appreciate your time and we'll see you next time.